Most women who come to my Facebook page or read my books are looking for some help in dealing with a destructive marriage. And many of them are frustrated, depressed, sad, and even a little angry. And what concerns me is the woman who comes here looking for something, a video or a resource, or some other way to get their husband to change, because somehow they need, with a capital N-E-E-D, that to happen in order for them to be okay. Now, friend, this is a very dangerous place for you to be in because you don't have one bit of control when it comes to whether or not your husband changes. You can't open his eyes to see the damage he's done. You can't make him feel convicted about his sin. You can't force him to see what will happen if he continues down the path he's on. Hear me, you have zero control over what he thinks, says, believes, or done. Zero. That's 100% the job of the Holy Spirit. And you're not the Holy Spirit. This is a really hard reality for many women to accept because they worry that if they stop trying to change their husband, then there's no hope for them. There's no hope for their marriage. That's not exactly true. But when you keep trying and trying and trying and failing to do the Holy Spirit's job, guess what happens to you? Oftentimes your heart becomes filled with frustration and anger and bitterness and resentment. And as that happens, your husband doesn't have to look at himself anymore because he's too busy pointing a finger at you, see? You're the angry one. See, you're the one who's out of control. See, you're the one who needs to forgive. See, you're the one who needs to change. God may be unhappy with the way your husband behaves, but what about you and how you're handling what your husband is doing wrong? Think about it this way. If it's your husband's fault that you're filled with resentment, then is it your fault that your husband's filled with anger and resentment too? No. Each person is responsible for the condition of his or her own heart. And God says it's your heart that he wants, not your sacrifice or religion. In other words, what God wants you to be is way more important than what he wants you to do. You could be the busiest volunteer in church or even the pastor or the pastor's wife, but if your heart is full of anger, are you really pleasing God? Now understand it's perfectly reasonable to want your husband to repent and change, but wanting it and needing it are very different. If you need him to change, then you're putting your spiritual, mental, and emotional health in the hands of a destructive person. You're telling yourself that in order for you to be at peace or for you to be okay, he has to change. He has to change in order for you to let go of resentment. He has to change in order for you to honor God with your heart and your life. You can't be okay or at peace unless he changes but you don't have the power to change your husband's heart. You don't have the power to convict him of his sin. You only have control over you and how you handle what your husband does. That doesn't mean that you ignore reality. If you're in a destructive marriage, you need to find a way to deal with that truth, either to stay well or to leave well. Now, Jesus doesn't ignore reality, but he also doesn't force someone into repentance. Let's look at the Last Supper. Here's Jesus sitting at the same table with Judas, knowing that Judas is going to betray him. And Jesus doesn't try to talk Judas out of it. He doesn't freak out or try to get the other disciples to talk to Judas so he would change his mind. Now, Jesus wasn't happy about it. He didn't pretend it was okay. The Bible says he was troubled in his spirit. Yet, he accepted the truth and reality, knowing that he was going to be betrayed by someone he loved. He was even at peace knowing that their relationship would ultimately end in death for both of them. Yet it says Jesus still loved Judas, even washing his feet that night. And that didn't even have an impact on Judas' heart. Now let's compare Judas to another man who loved money, Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the city of Jericho, and Zacchaeus regularly extorted money from his fellow Jews for his own personal gain. When Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house for lunch one day, something in this man's heart changed drastically and Zacchaeus ended up giving back four times the money he stole from his fellow Jews. That action, that amends, proved that what happened in Zacchaeus' heart was real. This selfish, greeting, lying, cheating man suddenly loved Jesus more than he loved money, and it showed in the way he lived his life. Notice, friend, nowhere in the story does it mention Zacchaeus' wife giving him a lecture that caused him to repent. Nowhere does it say she took him to a counselor who got through to him. True repentance comes from a change inside, and that's the job of the Holy Spirit. If your husband hasn't repented of his sin, you can't manufacture these steps to get him there. Yes, consequences may open his eyes to the result of his sin, but he still must personally choose to change that direction 
which is the de definition of repentance. Your job is to accept and learn how to be okay even if your husband doesn't change. Now that doesn't mean you ignore reality and if you're in a destructive marriage, you need to find a way to deal with that truth, to stay and stay well or leave and be well. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace and patience, goodness and gentleness and self-control. And these emotions are the complete opposite of resentment and anger and anxiety and frustration. Being at peace with who your husband is now and how he thinks doesn't mean you like it. It doesn't mean that you don't have some boundaries in place. It doesn't mean you don't speak up or implement consequences for un his unbiblical behaviors, but you now do it from a place of strength and love and power and a sound mind. You're doing it by faith and not fear. And you're doing it in the Holy Spirit's power, not a place of resentment and anger. What happens inside of you when your husband doesn't change needs to be more important than your husband or your circumstances changing. Because that friend, is the one thing you can control. God bless.